Hello and welcome to our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. Hi there, I'm AJ Dean, your host, and I have the amazing and truly wonderful co-host with me, Paul Vato. Hey, Paul, how's it shaking? Oh, it it's uh, it's shaking very well. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. It's it's going well. Just uh, just here, uh, it's been raining in Vegas, so it's not like your typical Vegas days, but. Uh, you know what? It's probably better than Chicago, where my mom's at. So it's wonderful, AJ. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here, Paul. You know, we love you so, so much. Guess what, Paul? We have a phenomenal special VIP in the building tonight. We have Levy Lee Simon. He's an award-winning director, producer, actor, artist, and thespian. And let's give him a special warm welcome. Hey, Levy. Hey, hey. Levy, it's so good to meet. How are you? How are you? Great. I'm good. I'm good. I'm here. You know, I'm I'm good. I feel good. I feel good. You look <laughs> great and welcome, Thanks. right, Paul? Okay, Paul. Uh, Paul. Yeah, of course. No, that's that's great. Sorry, my alarm went off because it's time for film talk with AJ Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right okay so um speaking of um nice things let's do a special shout out first to Marae Ayers uh hi Marae thank you so hi, much Marae. for casting hey there um hey. We, we love you and Marae you're so special you're a wonderful actress in Hollywood California Los Angeles we love you and thank you for casting this show and giving us a referral introducing us to Levy Lee and this is so wonderful. So many, many thanks to you. Okay, well, let's get right into it, Levy, Levy Lee. Um, we've got two great movie posters on the screen here. And um, I know everyone's gonna love them because they're beautiful posters. We have The Last Revolutionary, mm -hmm. and that was um, in 2017. And then we have the other movie that was a drama. And then your next one, your second one here is The Guest at Central Park West. Mm -hmm. Now that you were the producer and writer, ex I'm sorry, executive producer and writer for that, and that was um, 2009. So let's talk about these. These are incredible posters, and um, I can tell they have wonderful stories behind them. So let's talk about the first one, the last revolutionary. Tell us about that. Well, um, the last revolutionary started out as a play. Uh, it was a two-character play that I performed in with actor John Marshall Jones, um, best known for, uh, what was that? He was on a TV series called The Smart Guy um, back in the 90s, um, but he's working all the time. And, it, you know, good friend of mine, uh, somewhat of a business partner. And we did the play here in Los Angeles, and it was selected for the... National Black Theater Festival, I thought about it as a movie. Um, and it just so happened that when I, while, while I was down there, um, we did the play and I was approached by a director, Michael Brewer, who has worked in television for many years. And he saw the play and he said, hey, you know, Lee, I think this will make a great movie. And of course I agreed <laughs> and, you know, he came with all the equipment and all that. And then we decided that we would raise money and which we did on, uh, and, um, social media, you know, we raised the money for the show and that, that was an experience in itself, wow. a lot of hard work to get that money, but we got it, you know, and, um, and then we set out to uh, to shoot the movie, um, and it was shot in 2016. And then it premiered at the uh, Pan African Film Festival in 2017. And we did something like seven festivals that year. And then it was picked up by Indie Rights Distribution, 
and now can be found on Amazon Prime and um and it's all over the place and it, we've gotten great reviews out on it and um and re high ratings from uh IMDb and in all the other ratings so I, I'm happy you know we we got it done you know um you know I have had a number of scripts option by big studios that never got made um for whatever reason it 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 surely wasn't because of the the work I, I don't think I like to think <laughs> you know um but you know that's that's just the way it goes so I was very very happy to get this uh film done and get the reaction to the film that we've gotten so far mm, it's wonderful and I can see the four awards that you have on the movie poster um so that was so wonderful to win those along in the process of it. Now, this is a, what type of flag is that? Uh, that, because of the, of the storyline in, in the film, that flag is a, a kind of a Confederate flag, but it's, it's about doing away with yeah. Confederate ideology. Yes, yes. And this is so important. Um, this is interesting. And what other messages, what other themes and messages are so important about the last revolutionary? Is it about tearing down all the old so that the new can can begin and grow and fill those those old archaic spaces? Libby Lee? Well, let, me, let, let me give you the premise because I think the premise will answer all those questions. Um, so what's happening is that there is a guy who is a former revolutionary from the 60s and he um he has never left that period of time and you know he's kind of eccentric and maybe a little bit crazy we think because he's still kind of stuck in those times and the, we enter the film at the moment where He's frantically calling all of his old comrades, but everyone has moved on with their lives. Yeah. And and he's calling for, you know, a revolution today. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and everyone thinks he's like lost his nut. But one guy shows up. And uh, when he gets there, he's trying to talk him down from his crazy perch. You know, and he's got a, a um, he's got an apartment that's filled with weapons and, you know, and all because he's ready to go out and save. You know, he's this was written in the last year of uh, Obama. And so he's ready to protect Obama. He's ready to go out against the white supremacists and all that. And then during the course of this film, we realized that what he was fighting for in the 60s we're still fighting for today. Yeah. Right? But then there's a twist in in it where we find out that the friend that came to visit him is more than just a friend. And I'll leave it like that. Ooh, <laughs> okay. So there's a twist and a turn in there. What do you think yeah, about that? Yeah, there, there were a few of them. And uh, you know, and and it's it's basically a, a feature film with two actors and um Marla Gibbs the great Marla Gibbs makes a cameo in it but um we uh we were able to hold the audience you know for um a 90 minute feature with two actors and, and which is like kind of unheard of but um we've gotten a lot of praise for that amazing so where can we see it it's on Amazon Prime um dot amazon prime and just go to amazon prime put in the last revolutionary and it, it'll come up and people can watch it um or buy it and uh yeah so i love this message don't you paul i i do and, and uh <laughs> you kind of answered the the questions because i because my main question was uh, well what was it like you know i guess taking because it was a stage show first Mm -hmm. And then incorporating that in, into a film because, uh, but but you, but you kind of answered that because my question would have been, you know, was what it, was it difficult to hold people's 
attention because that is so difficult to, to make a movie with really basically two characters. And I'm guessing I've not seen it, unfortunately, not yet, but I will. Um, you know, I guess taking place in, in very minimal locations, yes, yes. which, which I mean, so how do you, how you did that? But I, of course, my guilty pleasure, I was, well, what was it like working with Marla Gibbs? Because I'm such a big fan of hers. Yeah, Obviously, I think. I think a lot of people, you know, that grew up in the 70s or watching those shows, you know, for the Jeffersons and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. What what a great character actress she is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually, I, I just saw her a couple of nights ago at, at an event out here. Um, she's 93 now. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. He's, and she's still going strong. And um, uh, it was great to work with her. She was so generous and so giving. And she's, like I said, a small cameo. But she comes in and she just takes the takes the screen. And the little bit she has to do, she almost stole the movie. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. That is great. That is great. So um, I do have a technical question about writing because you're an incredible playwright. You've written over 20 plays. Is it hard to transition from the playwright or, uh, yeah, the play... Uh, writing to the to the screenplay. I mean, that's major, isn't it, Levy Lee? It, Levy Lee? It, it, it's it's really really, yeah, <laughs> because um, a play centers around the words, right? And a screenplay is about the visual, you know. Um, so when I'm when I when I'm writing a play, adapting a play, I have to recognize that I'm gonna have to get rid of a lot of words, you know. And sometimes they're my favorite lines, and they gotta go, you know. And in, in the beginning, that used it's not as hard as it used to be. But when I first started making those adaptations, it was hard to let go and then to use a different part of my my brain to think, you know, how can I tell this story more visually? And so it's much easier if I'm if I'm writing a screenplay and I'm starting out with the idea from scratch to write the screenplay. But making the adaptation is always, you know, there's a lot of times you got to get rid of sometimes, you know, you know, I've had, you know, situations where studio people well you know i can still see the play in this lee you know and i'm like yeah i know because it started out as a play what do you think you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. Like, yeah. you know? so exactly. uh but but also one of the things that i think i want to do is have people understand that actually a play can hold on screen and we've seen that over the past few years where there have been adaptations of uh, works by August Wilson, for example, the great August Wilson player, you know, Denzel and, and Viola Davis and Fences, you know, you know, they just did Ma Rainey's Black Bottom that Ruben Santiago Hudson directed, you know, um, and uh, with Viola Davis playing uh, the Ma Rainey and uh, those actually did very well, very well. You know, I've been saying that forever, you know, but I, I think there's going to be, um, I think a lot of people now are looking for playwrights to write movies and TV shows and stuff. Absolutely, because now more than ever, um, it's everything is, the, the variety of, of something is what is needed, the different versions. And right. Yeah, so you're going to be hired very, you know, you're in business, you're going to be very busy, uh, Levy Lee, because we need that. I, I think it's actually, I, you're making it sound, um, you're, you're talented, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, Is it's not as, I don't think it's as easy. Do you, Paul? What do you think? No, no, and and you know what, and that's that's exactly it. Uh, yeah. The, the, the transition or, you know, from playwright or, or taking something from the stage and adapting it into film and it's so funny that you would say that that somebody would say well we can still see the play well of course you can still see the play because it is a play you know <laughs> right, but then right, how right. do you how do you make it into you know a film and 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 because you know that of course is its own art form 
But yeah. that is funny, of course, that a, a producer would say something like, well, I can still tell it's a play. Well, yeah, because that's what it yeah. started out as. <laughs> yes, yeah. and that's what theater is all about, isn't it, Levy Lee? I mean, theater, yeah. life is theater and theater is life. So um, part of the, so, it be, so it's very wordy as a play and you have to get rid of some things that you don't, that you like, that you love. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you make that decision? Um, well, what happens is, is like telling the story visually. So there are times when there could be a lot of words or a long scene and in a play. And I recognize that, okay, I don't need all of this entire scene to get across what needs to be, you know, told. And, but maybe I could set this up more visually and the picture will tell the story that the words would normally tell. And so that, that's a, that's, and that changes depending on, on what it is, you know, what the story is, what the script is, what the situation is, you know, so. Yeah, so, um, because isn't script writing and screenplays, isn't it, um, you know, the action is all about, uh, it's kind of con uh, to the point and it's present tense. It's like walks, talks. Yes. Right? So that's yeah. really, um, but, in a, but in a play, can you be more flowery with words? And what I mean by that is you can be more, descript more descriptive, right? And put diff uh, all kind of adjectives and, and sure. uh, right, details. Sure, sure. I mean, it, it all, you know, I, th I think with a play, playwrights have a lot more um, latitude with that. Um, I mean, if you read some of the classic plays, for example, you know, something like a Tennessee Williams or something, and there are like three pages of description <laughs> before you even get to the first page, first word of dialogue, you know, <laughs> they set it up and it, and it's so beautifully written and, and, um, you know, I, and I do that. No, not, not nearly to that degree when I'm writing a play, but, um, so the action that, that I would write in, in a screenplay um has to be treated a different way in a play amazing amazing so those two art forms um it, you're very talented and very creative i can see why you are such a, a great artist uh levy lee and um also i wanted to call attention to your website it's fabulous so i'd like everybody to go there and check it out it's um levy lee simon.com l-e-v-y l-e-e S I M O N dot com. Mm. And uh, Levy Lee, you were a graduate, or you are a graduate of the University of Iowa Playwrights Workshop, MFA. Um, how was that to, to graduate? For, what an incredible achievement. Um, did you enjoy it? Tell us something. Tell us about it. Well, first of all, it wasn't, it wasn't my idea at that time in my life to go to graduate school. I didn't wake up one day or I didn't plan for it. Um, I had a play that was done at Circle Repertory Theater Company in New York City, which was a very well-known theater company. And uh, one of the, the people that was working on the production in, uh, Barbara Goldman, who was also a playwright, uh, I, I came to the show one day and everyone was congratulating her in the green room because she got accepted to the University of Iowa Playwrights Workshop. And I, th I, I, I congratulated her and I said, hey, you know, watch out for the cows and the corn, you know, um, <laughs> good for you, you know. <laughs> yeah. A year, a year later, I was coming back to New York City. I had been doing a play, uh, acting in a play at Cincinnati Playhouse in the park. And I used to live in New York City, in Alphabet City. And uh, I was coming into my walk-up tenement 
and, and my key was in the door and my phone was ringing and it was Barbara and she was just calling to say, well, she had an agenda, but she was calling to say hi. And then she told me that the University of Iowa was offering fellowships for minority playwrights. And I told her, I'm not interested, Barbara. And she said, yeah, but you know, da, da, da. I said, Barbara, I was just in this play in Cincinnati. The play is getting ready to go to London. I'm not interested in going to school. I'm done, right? She sent the application anyway. The the play uh, was the play going to England was postponed, and now I'm looking at out of the corner of my eye. I'm looking at this application because you know the ups and downs of of being an actor, you know. And I'm looking at it, going, well, maybe. Now we're in, this was this was in like January. Now we're in June or July. And uh, and I heard that this guy, Lee Blessing, was gonna run the, the theater program at Iowa. And uh, this July day is a Friday, my manager called me and said, hey, I'm going up to the O'Neill, Eugene O'Neill Theater Festival. You wanna take a ride? Wow. Sure. sure. So we got in this car, it was a beautiful night, summer night. And and we got up there, and lo and behold, the play that was being done was Lee Blessing, who was also going to run the department in Iowa. And so I met him, said someone introduced me, said, hey, Lee, meet Lee. And he said, aren't you, <laughs> aren't you supposed to be coming to Iowa? And I'm like, he said, I've been hearing your name. And, you know, and I said, uh, yeah, he said, you didn't fill out the application. I'm like, eh. And, <laughs> and so... Long story short, he he came to see a reading of one of my plays. He called me the next day and he said, look, he said, if you um, want to come to Iowa, I'll take care of everything on this end. I know that you're thinking you've, you know, you're a professional, you know, you don't want to be cheated like a young student. We won't do that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I guess God, yeah, I'll go. So I went and it was one of the, one of the best moves I've ever made in my life, you know, to go there. I ended up being there three years to get my master's. And then I taught there for two years. So I was there for five years. I thought I was never going to leave, but they offered me to stay. But um, it was just too cold. You know, Paul, you know about those cold Midwestern winters, man. You know, it was just too cold, you know. And I tell I cannot take another winter in Iowa City. And by that time I had optioned Bow Wow Club to um my Bow Wow Club script to Fox Searchlight. So I had to go. Time to go. Wow. I was just gonna mention that. You fought you yeah. um to Fox, the Bow Wow Club. You optioned that. Um because you and was that because you were there at the you know Iowa University was that well the Bow Wow Club won a very prestigious award from the Kennedy Center best play that year and um and then there was a production that was done in New York City and uh I got a call from um from the producer in New York um and he said that uh, he had someone that had seen a play and they thought they wanted to talk to me about it, be, you know, coming to out to Hollywood. And um, so long story short, again, you know, uh, Pia Weiderman from Fox called me and said, Hey Lee, this will make a great movie. Um, what do you think? And it, and so we worked on it. I had not written a screenplay at that time talking about the adaptation and uh, so it ended up where I was writing this, my first screenplay, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I got some help from some friends of mine who are writers, they gave me some very um, good notes, you know, on it. And then in the interim, I I um, I got some new representation, and we left Fox Searchlight. I mean, if we was Twentieth Century Fox, and went to Fox Searchlight, where um, uh, Forrest Whitaker and and a whole bunch of other people got involved in, yeah. Wow, and it, and it and it never got made. See, it's one of those Hollywood stories, you know. It's like, mm -hmm. um, you know, our producer at Fox Searchlight had a car accident, set oh. everything off, and it was just, you know, one of those things. Uh, however, um, I have good news that 
I, I, uh, it's been optioned again, and Yay. we're looking at it being done this fall. Yay! Oh my gosh! Yeah. Breaking news right here. Leaving the <laughs> yeah, first time Amazing. I've said anything publicly about it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so excited. Thank you for that. So excited. And you yeah. know what? What's wonderful is, and I'm very sorry that it ha the uh, Fox professional got into a car accident. She's um, fine now, though. She she's was, fine it, now. It's, it was really bad. She she almost lost oh. her life, but she's she's you know, recovered and she's uh, still out there doing her thing. She's that's fine. wonderful. <laughs> that's that's great. You know what I'm also proud of is that you did your job. You you did everything you you did everything right. Yeah. And you finished it and it was ready. So you did all all on your end, which was beautiful. Um now did 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 you mention a little bit about you you're a cast member in the Pulitzer Prize winning Tony nominated the Kentucky Cycle on mm. Broadway? Is that what you were mentioning a few moments ago? No, no, that was that that was that was a different play. That was yeah. uh Miss Evers' voice. Uh oh. the Kentucky Cycle on Broadway was a, obviously you know, being on Broadway was a big deal. You know, one of the hi highlights of my career, working with Stacey Keach, you know, and um, but, a, but a great cast of people that play, was the first play to want to win a Pulitzer Prize, you know, before going to Broadway. Amazing. Uh, um, so it, it, you know, I felt like the play should have ran much longer because the audiences loved it. But the power of um, the press, the power of critics, you know, Frank Rich gave it a he didn't he didn't can us, but he gave it um, somewhat of a lukewarm review. And it, it's a six hour play. Oh, wow. And it's done in two parts. And so you we would do like a two part one on a Tuesday, part. Part one on a Tuesday, part two on a Wednesday. And repeat that Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday there would be a matinee in the evening, and wow. so three hours for each show, and um, and it ran it well. I mean, um, audiences loved it. It was a, you know, great story, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we ran. I forget how many how many two months or something like that. But we, you know, I was on Broadway. <laughs> you made it. You made it to Broadway. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you, what did what part did you play? Your cast member, right? Yes, I was a cast member. So it was a big cast, 21 actors. And they had the main ensemble, I mean, and the supporting ensemble. And the supporting ensemble members understudied the main characters. It, these characters changed because it goes from 1776 to to 1976, 200 years of this family we follow. And I played a bunch of different characters, you know, throughout this time. Yeah. What fun, what fun. It, now, it was a lot of fun, yeah. This is Broadway. What was it like, Levy Lee? What was it like? I, um, How can I tell you? Uh, It was, well, it's very exciting. Opening night was like, you know, one of those things because Stacy had like, you know, all of his friends came from all these celebrity types, iconic types came from uh, L.A. to New York. Um, wow. and, and, and we were packed every every single night. You know, um, of course, I grew up in New York City. So every night I had friends and family there. Um, one of my friends acted out when um, I took a bow at opening night and he was going, that's my man up there. That's my <laughs> man up there. <laughs> Loud and everything. People are looking back at it and I'm going, oh my God, that's, <laughs> that's my man up there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That was, he was there supporting you. Yes, yes. Cheering you on. And, you know, he was so proud. Yes, you know, yes. So proud of you. And, and I get that. Yeah. So what a wonderful experience, though, Levy Lee. Now, Paul, would you like to be on Broadway? Wouldn't that be fun? Paul? Oh, I, of course. What what a dream that would be. I can't I can't even imagine. Uh, and, and, you know, with my with my background in improv, I would love to see another improvised show uh, on Broadway, which I think probably hasn't happened since, I don't know, the 50s or the 60s with Mike Nichols and Elaine May. But mm -hmm. uh, of course, for me, that would be the ultimate Thing to have a show 
Uh, I'd even be happy off, maybe even off, off, off Broadway. But anything <laughs> like that would be would, would be amazing. Did, did, did we already ask you this? Did we ask you what, what did you do your undergraduate? I did my undergraduate at Cheney State College in Pennsylvania. It's the oldest HBCU all black college in the country, 1837, founded by Quakers for uh, runaway enslaved people. And oh. it was founded in 1837. It's 23 miles outside of Philadelphia. Uh, it's still there as a major HBCU. And uh, yeah, that's where I did my. That's where I did, not only did I do my undergrad there, um, that's where I discovered theater. Mm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's amazing. And you also, um, you did For the Love of Freedom about the Haitian Revolution and Independence produced uh -huh. by Danny Glover's Roby Theater Company. Is that right? Yes, yes. Wow, Danny yeah. Glover. I mean, that's big time, isn't it? Oh well, I, I, yeah, I guess. Um, um, you know, uh, here's a, the short story about that. Is I years and years ago, I I I, I came across a book called The Black Triumvirate in the Liberation Bookstore in New York City, in Harlem. I opened the the book in this bookstore, read the first page, and I was hooked. And I read the book, and I said to my, and I wasn't writing at that time. But I said to myself, wow, this will make a great movie or a great play. And uh, fast forward years later, when I got the opportunity to go to the University of Iowa, um, they told me that I would have to write a thesis play at the end of my three years. And I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a um, I'm going to write an epic drama about the Haitian Revolution. And so uh, I wrote the first play. Toussaint and a friend of mine told me who was from San Francisco and she was in the program as a director where she had graduated and she was back in the Bay Area and she told me that uh, she heard that Danny Glover was looking for um, writers for a movie about Toussaint Louverture and I'm like okay so I sent a query letter and um, they said that they were not interested in a in a play, they were interested in screenwriters. And at that time, I had not written a screenplay yet. And so I let it sit for a few months. And then one Saturday, I shot up in the bed like a bullet. I was like, oh my God, I should send it anyway. Because yeah. they needed to know someone had done all that research because it was a research project, wow. you know? And, and so I sent it off and I sent it off and forgot about it. And then Maybe three weeks, three and not three weeks, three months later, I'm sitting sitting in my office in at the University of Iowa, and the phone rang, and it was uh, Ben Guillory, who is the artistic director of the Roby Theater. He introduced himself, and he said, "We got your play, and we want to know if we have could we have permission to do your play." He said. Then he said, "He said someone wants to talk to you." And uh, first of all, I'm thinking, who's playing a trick on me? And then, and then, this voice says, "Hey, man, love your play, man. This, we've been looking for a play like this for seven, eleven years, man." And it was Danny. Oh, right? and wow! I'm, and I'm in Iowa. And I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> And and but I maintain my cool, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, of course, you have have permission to do the play. I hung up the phone and I just screamed, right? Yeah. And I went out into the, the lobby of the theater <laughs> building and people are opening their classroom doors going, what happened? What happened? I just <laughs> told them to come on the phone. They're going to do my play. <laughs> I mean, so exciting. I mean, over the moon with excitement, right? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And and such a joyous joyous occasion and what fun too and and total surprise total surprise yeah, right? yeah total total um again you know i i feel i feel blessed you know um because a lot of times things that have occurred in my career and in my life uh have not happened in in the most traditional way <laughs> you know it's yeah. not like you know i 
diligently send out letters or whatever and wait to get a response. I mean, sometimes it's it never it's never linear. It never happens, you know, A, A B, C, D or one, two, three. It doesn't go like that, you know, with me. So I, I have to learn sometimes to just have faith and, and do the work, you know, yeah. do the work, you know, stay out of the results, you know, um, have a, a that's my that's my mantra, my attitude, you know, um, because it will things that are for you will happen. You know, they will. You know? Yes. I love that you mentioned faith and uh, I, that's so important to me too. And I have that belief and I love that you're, that you have that and your belief in things will work out and the right timing. Mm -hmm. that, that is so beautiful. Um, Paul, did you want to ask a question or say a comment? No, I was just excited to to hear the name uh, Danny Glover because of, of course, some, yeah. uh, you know, I'm probably a fir first, you know, but just to hear his voice, I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say, that would have just driven me nuts because he's got such a distinctive <laughs> yeah, physical yeah. voice that you're yes. like, oh my God, I'm talking to uh, Roger Murtaugh uh, from Lethal Weapon, you know, but, but of course, <laughs> you know, he's done so many wonderful projects yes. and yeah. all that, but yeah. especially... You know, for me, it would have just really hit close to home when you hear that very distinctive voice of his. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a great, he's a great, not only a great artist, but he's a great man, too. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I can only imagine. I would I would love to work with him. It's somebody that I would I would love to, uh, yeah. uh, you know, work with or, or at least support his work as well. So um, amazing. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, we've got the second movie poster here, The Guest at Central Park West. Um, and it says, um, backstage read, wrote a um, comment saying, John Marshall Jones is sensational. So let's talk a little bit about that, Levy Lee. Well, The Guest at Central Park West, a very special piece for me. Um, again, another play started out as a play that was first done in New York City in a theater in Harlem, uh, uh, the Hadley Players, which was founded by a woman by the name of Gertrude Jeanette, um, who was my theatrical mentor and grandmother. Uh, you know, when I came back to New York from Cheney years and years ago, and she um, founded this theater company and she had retired at 102 years old, okay? And um, so someone else had taken over for her and I sent the script in and they, they called me and said they wanted to do the play. So I go to New York because I'm still in LA. I went to New York and we auditioned people and I couldn't find anyone actor, the people that I had in mind were busy. I couldn't find anyone to play the lead part. And um, in the interim, John Master Jones called me, you know, um, from LA, you know, just to check in and say, hey, how you doing? And I said, man, I'm having a uh, problem finding an actor to play this lead part. He had done a reading of it out, out in LA. And he said, yeah, I'll come out and do it. I said, yeah. I said John, I said, it's going to be at a theater in Harlem. You know? <laughs> he said, I don't care. I, I'll come. I'll come and do it. He said, I, I have to do justice to that part. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so I called I call the artistic director, and they were like, we can't afford him. And I'm like, but then she, she said the artistic director called Gertrude Jeanette, again, at home, 102 years old. And um, he said, tell that young man to get on the plane. <laughs> and and her legacy, you know, she's a, a former friend of Paul Robeson, first black woman to drive a medallion cab. She rode around the city on motorcycles back in the 1940s. I mean, she's a firebrand all on her own. And yeah. she came to every single rehearsal while we were rehearsing the show, she was at 102 years old. She was there every single night, you know, giving her input, you know, and all of that. And so at the end of that production, John had uh, these 
he, we filmed it. We filmed the stage show. So that's what that poster is. However, mm -hmm. again, newsflash, we are actually going to do the feature film, The Guest of Central Park West, this year as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, that's happening. That's in the works right now. And uh, we are really over the moon excited about it. It will be called The Guest. Um and um Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So we we're we're uh option through um, Mojo Films and wow. and so we're we're yeah, yeah. Congratulations, Levy Lee. Congratulations on both of these. Um so we'll be looking out for them. Oh my gosh, that's such exciting news. And I just want to say you're a phenomenal guest. Um and I do want to encourage everybody to support you and follow you. How can they support you and follow you, Levy Lee? Well, I'm I'm on Facebook. Um, you know, I have a couple of pages on Facebook and uh use the Levy Lee Simon and you'll find me, you know, and same thing with Instagram. Instagram handle is Levy Lee the Jazz Lion. <laughs> you'll find me on Instagram. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I do all the social media stuff. Um. Yeah, I, and that's that's how you get me. You know. Beautiful. How did you get the name the Jazz Lion? Okay, that's another. So, I, I love jazz. Um, oh. but that's not how, how how that came about. Another mentor of mine, the great Ernie McClintock, who was no longer with us. But when I was a young actor, I studied with Ernie, and he had a he had a, a acting technique called jazz acting. And he built a whole technique around the idea of jazz. And so that is just a part of me. I you know, love jazz. that. I, yeah. I love that so much. Don't you? That's a great, I love jazz. Don't you, Paul? Yeah, I, I, I sure do. I mean, that, <laughs> what a great nickname. I love it. I love it. And, and appropriate, I would say. Well, you know, Ernie McClintock was one of those directors in Harlem back in the day that everybody um, wanted to work with. All, all the major actors had studied with him at some point or another, including Morgan Freeman and, and people like that. Uh, um, and, um, you know, we did, um, did a production of A Raisin in the Sun at the Apollo Theater that Tupac was in. Uh, he was he played my son. He was twelve years old. He played Travis, and I played Walter Lee at the Apollo Theater. Wow! Amazing, amazing, That's incredible! It's incredible! Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're just um, you're you're just amazing, isn't he, Paul? Yeah, he sure is. And and you know what I want to say is also, it sounds like a lot of these projects that you've been working on for a long time or have, uh, in one way or another been involved with for a very long time are finally coming to fruition mm -hmm. uh, and it just goes to show you you know the persistence and the, you know this this isn't a business of overnight success right. or you know it, it might seem like overnight success but it's that old adage that old joke yeah if they're an overnight success it just took them you know 20 some years to do it yeah. so uh, i mean congratulations on keeping up the good fight and getting all these stories out there. I mean, th these are, I think these are just such stories that need to be told. Uh, so it's amazing though, that you're able to keep at it and then finally get them produced. And, and they're, they're, you know, it's at the, it's at the right time. Maybe that's why it's taken a while to get them done, but maybe right now more than ever, these are stories that must be told and are going to be told. So thank you for sharing that with the world. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. You know, I I, I like to think that I, I I always tell people, you know, I want to have my my finger on the pulse of what's going on, and it just so happens that um, that I I don't know why, you know, um, with the guests at Central Park West, there's a storyline in in that in that story where the guest, this homeless guy, shows up at a at a dinner party or at on Central Park West and we find out that he is a friend of one of the guy that's hosting the the dinner party but he has an agenda and the agenda was to blow up the statue that used to sit in front of 
the Museum of Natural History with Teddy Roosevelt on a horse and a Native American beside him and a enslaved African beside him on their feet is a very, you know, racist statue. And he was going to blow it up. I wrote that in 2008. And then guess what? Fast forward, you know, 2020 after George Floyd, what's happening? They're taking statues down all, not only in the United States, but all over the world. Yeah. You know, I was watching, you know, Bristol, England. They were taking the statue down, down there, throwing them in the river. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I had my finger on the pulse with that. Something, I don't know. Yes, you did. Yes, <laughs> you, you know? did. Absolutely. And I want to, um, I want to say, I just, can you show everyone your beautiful rings? I, I've got mine, um, but these, these are costume rings, but we both, we both are, uh, look at the rings that you've got. They're so beautiful. And you got beautiful bracelets as well, Lee Lee. I just wanted to show them off. Aren't they nice, Paul? I, I love them. I'm so impressed. I'm a big fan of, uh, is, is it, is that turquoise? I mean, cause I'm such a yes, big yes, man. My favorite, my favorite stone, turquoise and bloodstone here. You know, yeah. I got tiger eye over here. Oh, tiger. I love tiger eye. Uh. <laughs> I love tiger eye. Um, this has been incredible. Um, and I'm so sorry, the time has just flown by and we have to start mm -hmm. wrapping it up soon, but we're going to do our heart and Paul over to you for your heart message. Wow. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I can follow that, but I think it's it's just uh, the power of perseverance. It's it's uh, don't give up, and everyone has a story to tell. And now more than ever, the world needs to hear these uh, these wonderful and amazing stories. So uh, thank you to our wonderful guest, and and thank you, for, uh, AJ, for putting this platform out there where we can where, where we can share these stories uh, and whatnot. Um, and if, of course, if anybody would like to follow me, you can always find me at, at uh, paulvato.com. And from there, you can find all of my social media. So again, thank you, AJ. Thanks for making this possible. <laughs> is that a cigar? <laughs> this is a cigar. This is Paul. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Levy Lee. This is Vato Cigars, hand-rolled, um, original from our creative co-host Paul Vato, right, Paul? Uh, wow, that that's right. I I didn't I did not mention uh, I'm in the cigar business. I own a cigar company, so Vato Cigars. Uh, so we'll we'll have to share a cigar uh, if you're ever up for it, uh, Levy. When ne next time you 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 uh, have a a movie or a show, and I hope to work work with you one day, my friend. Yes, yes, that would be great. You know, and 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 I have a bunch of friends here in L.A. who are who are cigar smokers, so I have to turn them on to you. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, AJ, if you don't mind, connect us, and I'll send uh, Levy a, a menu of our of our offerings. So thank you very much. Oh, yes, uh, yes, for sure. I'll do that, yeah. I'll definitely <laughs> do that. And I did have one more question, if I may, before you do your heart message. Um, uh, Levy Lee, are you open to acting rules for all those casting directors out there? Are you open to doing acting as well still? Oh yes, for sure. I, I and 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So all those casting directors that are going to watch this, uh, take note and yeah. contact Levy Lee for your next uh, starring role or supporting role or whatever uh, film project that you think uh, he would be perfect for. Uh, thank you again, and thank you, Levy Lee, for being such an outstanding and beautiful guest. And over uh, to you. Thank you for having me. Really, yes. So what what do I? Your what, heart message, yes, for I have a heart. I, I have to do this off the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> or, or, you know, Levy Lee, it can be a shout out to someone or a thank you. It well, can of be course, I want to thank Moray for for yeah. making this connection. Thank you, my dear Moray. I love you. And um, writing, uh, acting is my love. Writing is my responsibility. How about that? Wow, that is phenomenal. That tops it all, doesn't it, Paul? <laughs> what? Yeah, what a beautiful uh, statement. Uh, I, I might have that. That that is uh, so well said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. It's so enjoyable, <laughs> and I hope we get to work more with each other, Levy Lee and Paul. Yeah. Oh gosh, that would be so much fun. And until next time, I have to say au revoir to everyone, and until we meet again. All right.
Amazing. Yay.